My name is Mark Polk and this is my RV garage. I got bit by the RV bug when I was 15 years old and still have it today. I started in this industry washing campers and since that time I've helped educate over a quarter million RVers on how to safely and properly use and maintain their RV. My favorite pastimes are RVs, muscle cars, and motorcycles. Welcome to my RV garage. Welcome to the season finale of Mark's RV Garage. On this episode, Mark finishes the old Yellowstone restoration project and reflects back on how we got to this point. Enjoy the show. recall our vintage trailer restoration project almost came to a screeching halt when we realized that the axle on the trailer was only rated at 2,600 pounds rather than the 3,500 pounds we thought it was rated for. I put a call in to Dexter Axle and they said to give them the measurements for the axle and they would get one built and sent out ASAP. They saved the day. The axle is here and as soon as we get it installed we can install our disc brakes from Kodiak trailer components and our electric hydraulic actuator from Tucson RV brakes. We have a lot to do so we better quit talking and start working. Come on. off and I'm going to show you what the culprit is here. If you'll notice on the old axle we've only got a three quarter inch diameter spindle whereas our new axle I believe it's a one and one sixteenth inch diameter on the spindle. And then you also notice the new axle tube is much bigger in diameter than the old axle and combined that's going to give us our 3,500 pound rating on our new axle. So we've got the old one off. We're going to take a real close look at our springs and make sure there's absolutely no problems with the leaf springs. And then we're going to go ahead and install our new axle. All right. Before we put our new axle in, I mentioned that we wanted to we wanted to inspect our leaf springs and our spring brackets, checking the welds, uh, checking our bolts, making sure. There's nothing wrong with the uh, leaf springs before we mount the axle, which would be a waste of time if that were the case.
Okay, we've got our axle in and we've got our U-bolts on. And right now I'm getting ready to torque the nuts on the U-bolts. It's 70 foot-pounds. There's that one. That one. Well, the first piece of the puzzle is complete. We have our axle installed, and now it's time to install our, our disc brakes complements of Kodiak trailer components. The first step to mounting our disc brakes is to install our hub, and to do that, we have to pack our wheel bearings with grease, and then install the inner bearing and our inner seal, and then we can mount the hubs on the spindles. All right, when I was a mechanic in the military, I, pa I probably packed over a thousand of these wheel bearings with grease, and the key to packing a wheel bearing is to get the grease to go from the bottom of the bearing up through the rollers and come out the top. And when you see it coming out the top all the way around, then you've got a, a well-packed bearing. So the way we're going to do that is I'm going to put some grease right there on my hand and I'm just going to take the bearing and I'm going to work it in until you actually see the grease coming up through between the rollers. just going to drop that bearing in the hub. Okay, we've got our inner bearing in and now it's time to install our inner seal and basically you want to get it started even all the way around the hub. And you just want to want it flush with the hub. And that's going to keep our grease in the hub and keep the dirt out. So we're going to do that on the other side. Up. Okay, before we can actually mount our our hub and our rotor, we have to put our brake flange on and we're just going to bolt that onto the axle and then torque it to the specs in the manual. We're just going to slide our hub right over. bearing to slide in on the spindle like that. Go ahead and put our washer and our nut on the spindle. What we want to do is we want to seat our bearing. Basically, we just tighten the spindle nut, spin the hub, give those bearings a chance to seat and we don't want it this tight because you could prematurely wear your bearings in bearing races. So at this point we just want to back it off. What we don't want is we don't want any play in the bearing but we want the rotor hub to spin freely. Okay, then drop our cotter pin in place. That keeps our spindle nut from backing off at all. All right, our cap will keep the grease in and the dirt out. And we're just gonna slide it right on, take our bolts from the back, just hand tighten them for now nug them up and then we're going to torque them to the specs 
40 to 50 foot pounds. Part two of our brake conversion is complete. We have our new axle and disc brakes installed on the old Yellowstone trailer. Now we need some way to make our electric and hydraulic brakes work when we hit the brake pedal in the tow vehicle. That's where the electric hydraulic actuator by Tucson RV Brakes comes in. We will install the actuator on the front of the trailer, run some brake lines to the brake calipers, bleed the system, and we'll be one step closer to taking the old Yellowstone on its first camping trip. Just ran down to the local industrial supply shop and had some flexible rubber brake lines made. And the reason we did that is because we don't want the steel brake lines to go directly to our brake calipers. When the wheel is moving up and down and you travel down the road, you don't want to take a chance of that steel line breaking. So we'll connect this flexible line and that'll take care of that problem. Okay, we have to extend some of our wiring uh, from the AccuLink wiring harness so we can get to our trailer wires. And basically, the brakes on your trailer or RV are only as good as your wire connections, and that's why we opted to solder all of our connections so we don't compromise our wiring. Okay, our, our installation of our AccuLink is actually completed. Uh, we still have to bleed the brakes, and right now we want to test our breakaway switch. We just installed the breakaway, and to test it, all I'm going to do is pull the pin, 
and the AccuLink should build up full pressure for about 20 seconds, then it should drop off to a lower pressure, which is what would actually activate the brakes in the event that this pin got pulled when you're towing the trailer. So we're going to pull the pin, we should hear it come on, and it'll let us know if it's working. Okay, our breakaway is working, now we can go ahead and bleed the brakes and we're one step closer to towing the trailer for the first time. Okay, we're going to go ahead and bleed the brakes and, and we're going to start with uh, bleeding the AccuLink. Uh, it's similar to bleeding the brakes on a car, you're trying to get all the air out of the system so the brakes will work properly. Since we're not hooked up to the tow vehicle and plugged in, we can't activate the brakes using our brake controller or foot pedal. So we're going to use our uh, breakaway again to assist in bleeding the brakes. And this will produce some high pressure, so we want to make sure that we've got our tubing down inside some brake fluid in our jug. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my pin, and then I'm going to open my bleeder valve about a half a turn, and we should see some air coming in here. Now we don't want to take a chance of letting our brake fluid run dry, so we're going to go ahead and top it off and then we'll do it again and I think we've got most of the air out of there. This episode of Mark's RV Garage is sponsored in part by Camping World, KOA, Explorer RV Insurance, Tucson RV Brakes, Kodiak Trailer Components, and Equalizer Hitch. Well, we've got our axle and our brakes completed, but before we can actually tow the trailer, we need to address a very important safety issue, and that issue is the hitch work. Whenever you're dealing with a travel trailer that hitches to a ball at the rear of the tow vehicle, trailer sway becomes a concern. The good news is with a properly built trailer and an effective hitch setup, you can control a great deal of trailer sway. Equalizer brand hitches work to help control trailer sway using a four-point sway control. It's a combination of four positive friction areas that work together to combat trailer sway. Four-point sway control is superior to add-on friction bars or cam type systems that are used with conventional or chain style weight distribution hitches. But for the hitch to be effective, it's also important that it's set up properly for the tow vehicle and the trailer. This particular equalizer hitch is designed for a maximum trailer weight of 4,000 pounds, which will work great with the old Yellowstone trailer. Let's get the hitch on right now. <laughs>
Well, we just double checked all our measurements and we've got some really good weight distribution going on with the old Yellowstone trailer. That equalizer hitch took about 30 to 40 minutes in real time to install, so it's a pretty simple installation. And once you have it installed, you can feel confident when you're driving down the road that any type of sway you may encounter is going to be taken care of by that four-point sway control with the equalizer hitch. The only step left in this puzzle before we can take the, the Yellowstone down the road for a ride is to install the direct link brake controller in the tow vehicle. For more information on this equalizer hitch, take a minute to visit www.equalizerhitch.com. When it comes to learning about your RV, we've got you covered. Whether you prefer reading, watching a DVD, or learning online, we have an RV training course tailored just for you. Just go to www.rvconsumer.com and click on the RV Consumer Training tab. Happy RV learning! The only step left to complete our new trailer braking system is to install our network enhanced direct link brake controller. This will give us a digital two-way data network that will send braking data to the AccuLink actuator letting me know the exact status of the towable brake system whenever I'm towing the trailer. And the final result is amazing proportional trailer braking. Let's install it right now. Now that's a braking system. I can assure you one thing, when it's time to stop, the old Yellowstone will stop on a dime. And I have the most advanced network towing diagnostics available right at my fingertips. For more information on disc brakes, the AccuLink electric hydraulic actuator, and the network enhanced direct link brake controller, visit www.kodiaktrailer.com and www.directlink.com. What was our goal with the show? Our goal was to promote RVing and help RV enthusiasts learn more about using and maintaining their RV. In addition to the educational segments in the show, we wanted a feature segment that our viewers would be interested in watching on Fold. That segment turned out to be our vintage trailer restoration project. In hindsight, I'm not sure if I would tackle a project this big again, but now that it's over, I wouldn't change a thing. It gave me the opportunity to work on a project with Tyler, which was great. He did a wonderful job seeing it through to the end. Tyler, is he in a motorhome? Did I know how involved the restoration project would become? 
I knew I wanted to upgrade the old trailer with modern day technology, but I didn't think it would require rebuilding the trailer from the ground up. Oh boy, I sure hope he knows what he's doing. Anybody out there want to buy a good Vantage trailer, just email Mark at rveducation101.com. I've got a good deal for you. <laughs> What were my biggest concerns during the restoration project? I've done quite a bit of carpentry and plumbing work in the past, so I wasn't too concerned about the framing, the water system, or even the LP gas system. I would have to say my biggest concerns were the electrical system and installing the new metal on the exterior of the trailer. What's funny about it is I worried about getting into some of those projects, but when it was time to do them, they really weren't that difficult. Did I consider keeping everything original in the restoration? I actually struggled with that. I understand that lots of folks realize the importance of keeping the trailer as original as possible during a restoration project. I also knew that there was going to be lots of project sponsors throughout this project. I thought it would be really neat to bring the past into the present, so that's the direction we decided to go. We wanted to keep the vintage look of the trailer with modern day amenities and technology. If I had to describe the trailer project using one word, what would it be? That's easy. It would be sleeper. In the world of muscle cars, a sleeper is a car that looks ordinary and plain on the outside, but packs a lot of power under the hood. The old Yellowstone looks ordinary on the outside, but it's equipped with the latest technology on the inside. Can we take a look at some before and after shots of the trailer? Yes, definitely. I think that would be great. Let's take a look right now.
Well, it's time for the old Yellowstone's maiden voyage. Thanks for watching our online series and be safe when you're out exploring this beautiful country in your RV. The big question is, will there be a season two? Let's just say I am talking to some people about the possibility of another show. The focus would still be on education, but we would like to add some new segments featuring some of our RVing friends. How about RVing with Mark Polk and friends? I like that. Keep an eye out in the spring of 2012. There might be another great online RV show in the works. Mm -hmm.